Okay, let's take a look at the geometric sequence formula. A sub n, or any term, is equal to the first term times r, which is your common ratio, raised to the n minus 1 power. And let's remember now, n minus 1 is the exponent in this case. Again, on your practice, one of your problems, the first term is 3, r equals 5, n equals 6, and we want to find out what a sub n equals. In essence, we want to find out what is the value of the sixth term of this sequence. Now, one thing you got to keep in mind that since this is geometric and it's an exponent, your geometric sequence values can get large very quickly. So we're going to simply say, okay, I need my first term, I need my common ratio, and I need the number of terms minus 1. So my first term's value is 3. Now, anytime I substitute in, I'm going to use parentheses. Very important. My r value is 5, and my n is 6. So I'm going to end up with 6 minus 1. Now, a very common mistake here is that students will take the 3 and the 5, and they'll multiply that together before dealing with the exponent. But let's remember our order of operations we got to deal with the exponential expression first before we can deal with the multiplication. So, this will become 3 times 5 raised to the 5th power. Now again, you may need your calculator to do these calculations. Well, again, I'm not going to multiply the 3 and the 5 together. Instead, I'm going to keep the 3 and 5 raised to the 3rd, to the 5th power, excuse me, is 3,125. Now I can multiply the 3 times 3,125 and I end up with 9,375. So the sixth term of the sequence has a value of 9,375. Another way that this information can be presented to you is in this form here. Find the tenth term of the sequence. 2, 6, 18. Again, to determine if this is geometric, I could simply take the 6 and divide it by 2. I notice it's got a value of 3. And if I took the 18 and divided it by 6, I also have a value of 3. So therefore, my R value, or my common ratio, is 3. Therefore, this is, in fact, a geometric sequence. I now can use my formula that any term in my sequence is equal to the first term times my common ratio raised to the n minus 1 power. So now I'm looking for the tenth term. Let's fill in what we know. We know that we have ten terms. We know our first term is 2. How do we know that? It's right here. We also know that our r, our common ratio, is 3. Okay. So now we can substitute in and find the value of the tenth term. It's going to end up being 2 times 3 raised to the 10 minus 1 power. Again, I cannot multiply the 2 and the 3 together. That's a common mistake. 10 minus 1 is 9. 3 to the ninth power, I recommend you using a calculator or your cell phone is going to give you 19,683. Now multiply 2 times that, and we end up with 39,366. So the value of the tenth term of the sequence is 39,366. We can also use our formula to find missing values in our sequence. For example, we have values that are missing between the 3 and the 48. I could easily identify that my first term is 3, my last term is 48, and the question is, is how many terms do I have? Well, if I count, including the blanks, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
I have five terms. But as you can see, what I'm missing is my r. I don't know what the common ratio is. If you're asked to find geometric means for a geometric sequence, that usually means you need to calculate your r value or your common ratio. Notice that I have everything else that I need in the formula, and so I'm ready to proceed. My last term's value is 48. My first term is 3. I don't know what my r value is, but my n is 5 minus 1. Let's go ahead and see if we can simplify and clean this up a little bit. So I have an equation to solve, an exponential equation to solve. Simply by dividing by 3, I'm going to end up with 48 divided by 3, which is 16. And now I need to ask myself a question. Is there some number that I can raise to the power of 4 that would give me an answer of 16? Or could I take the fourth root of 16? Either way will help you get your answer. I've decided to think about it more as powers of 4. In which case, I rewrote 16 as 2 to the 4th power. Now, without much argument, I think it's easy to see that my r, or my common ratio, is 2. Now that I know what my common ratio's value is, I can come back up top here and fill in the rest of the blanks. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24, and I always check my last value to make sure that it works. 24 times 2 is 48. So you can use your geometric means to make your calculations by finding R. Now, just as a quick example, though, sometimes they may give you blanks in front of your terms. Let's say they give you a problem like this. Remember, sequences go on forever. And if you treat them, for example, as a sequence that goes on forever, even if I was to add other blanks past this, I could treat it like a piece of tape and cut it here and cut it here and then do my calculations. This should have been 48, I'm sorry, instead of 36. Okay, and you could go through and do that calculation to figure out your answers. What's the last thing that we could do is we could find the number of terms for your problem, meaning what is your n value. Once again, if I know it's geometric, which I've been told in the problem, I can use the formula a sub n is equal to the first term times r to the n minus 1. And so therefore, what information do I know? I know that my first term is 3. It's given in the problem. My r value, as you can see through inspection, 6 divided by 3 is 2. 12 divided by 6 is 2. So my r value is 2. And I also know my a sub n value, which is 192. I can now go using my formula to so simply substitute in a sub n equaling the first term times r to the n minus 1. I'm going to end up with 192 equals the first term, which is 3, times r, which is 2, to the n minus 1 power. Again, it's just plugging in values and working through the formula. But once again, don't make the mistake of multiplying the 3 and the 2 together. This 2 is raised to the n minus 1 power. So instead, I'm going to divide by 3. Okay? 192 divided by 3 
is 64. What's left on my right side of my equation is 2 to the n minus 1 power. Once again, I want to start thinking, can I take 64 and rewrite it as 2 raised to some power? I start thinking, can I raise it 2 to some power? Why did I pick 2? It's because my base on my right side is 2, and I'm trying to get my bases alike. Sure enough, 2 to the 6th power is 64. And once again, since my bases are alike, I can simply set my exponents equal, and I'm left with 7 equals n. So it's very easy for me to see then that the answer to my question is 7. I hope that this helps you as you're trying to figure out how to use your formulas for geometric sequences.